This program is sponsored by Ford and PlayStation, UEFA Champions League sponsors. It's the decisive test for Manchester United in the Champions League. After the torrent of scoring that overwhelmed the Danish champions, Bromby. It's a perfect start for Manchester United. After the home and away epic with Barcelona, that finished 6 all on aggregate. Wonderful, wonderful goal by David Beckham. It's 3-3. Three, three. Catastrophic start for Manchester United. Manchester United are back in front. What a finish. What a match. And after the crucial last-minute mistake in Munich, without which United would have already qualified. Just never a dull moment with Manchester United in Europe, is there? Tonight it's the final showdown in Group D. The biggest clubs of England and Germany head to head. The winner goes through. And good evening to you all from Old Trafford. Now, if you like your football live and big time, this is the only place to be for the next couple of hours. Terry Venables and Glenn Hodler with me. Welcome to you both, and we'll have your pre-match thoughts in just a moment. This is how Group D stands, with one match left to be decided. A draw puts Bayern through as group winners. It could be OK for United as well. Ten points would be enough to qualify as one of the two best runners-up. Unless, in Group B, both Galatasaray and Rusenberg win those tricky away games. I know it's slightly complicated, but don't worry. Uh, win, and we will keep you in touch throughout the evening. A win, I'm sure, is what uh, Alex Ferguson will be demanding here tonight. Let's hear from the United boss now. He's talking to Gary Newbon. Alex, United have been conceding goals at the start of some of these European games and occasionally at the end. What have you been drumming into the players to make sure it doesn't happen? Well, obviously, concentration is very important and also sensible play. I think we want to start, start well. I think we want to make sure the ball's near half, particularly in the early parts of the match. And hopefully we can settle that way. I think we'll go and enjoy it. I mean, you're definitely going for a win. You have to tonight. Oh, yes. Uh, so what sort of game is it going to be? Because the Germans only need a draw. Yeah, I think they'll be quite cautious. I don't think they'll go gung-ho. I think they'll, they'll play with their efficiency and they'll try to keep good possession. Um, and if we make mistakes, then they'll try and take advantage of that. Obviously, it's a night in which you don't want to make a lot of mistakes. They do happen in the games of football. It's a human element thing anyway, but if we can keep our game nice and tidy and simple, I think we'll have a marvellous chance. Great news for Alex Ferguson. He has a, a full squad to choose from. He picks the team that to play the second half at Aston Villa. Glenn Hoddle, you watched that game. Ryan Giggs returns to the European stage. What sort of shape is he in? Well, I saw him Saturday when he came on for the 45 minutes and uh, he wasn't quite at full throttle, uh, Jim, and I, I felt he was holding something back. He obviously didn't want to get uh, that foot injury injured again with su such a big game, but I think he's been magnificent in their European campaign you know, you know, in the last two years and uh, he's put in some massive uh, performances and let's hope he can reproduce that tonight. Now, Terry, uh, when Alex Ferguson looks alongside him, he won't see Brian Kidd for the first time in the Champions League. No, what effect not. will that have? <laughs> well, <laughs> it'll be out of a story if he does. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the game is so massive and huge tonight that uh, his, his mind will be on one thing. I think there will be lots of times when he will miss him. They've been together a long time, but uh, tonight I think they've only had one thing in mind, to go out there and attack uh, full throttle. There's no doubt about it. Mm. Elbert, the man who got the goal over there in Munich, says Peter Schmeichel is the weak link. Do you go along with that? Well, he's, <laughs> he's threatening to, for Schmeichel to have a blinder tonight by saying that. But uh, I must say, again, on Saturday at Villa Park, he, he wasn't himself. He, he came and missed about two or three crosses. He didn't look at ease, and he was, he was making his defenders uneasy, where, you know, we've seen year after year in the last four or five years, he's been supreme at the back there. Um, but European night, you know, he has produced great performances in the past. Briefly, how do you see it? I think it's a tough one. I think, uh, I think United will go through, but I think they might draw. I think the Germans will come and get what they need. Terry? Uh, I'm uh, full of confidence. I've gone with them all the way through and I'm not changing my mind tonight. I think they'll go full-blooded attack. It will be a full-blooded game anyway. Thanks to you both. OK then, Manchester United, the great entertainers of Europe, have to deliver a classic performance as Bayern Munich tastes the Old Trafford experience for the very first time. We'll be right back.
Live welcomes you back to Old Trafford for this compelling climax to Manchester United's roller coaster qualifying campaign. And if United really are big time performers, they don't come much bigger than this. We join your commentators, Ron Atkinson and Clive Tilsley. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the European Super League. When the modern-day movers and shakers dream up their future for 21st century football, this is what they have in mind. Old Trafford, one of Europe's five-star stadia, packed to the rafters, and two of the continent's great past champions fighting for their Champions League lives and reputations, not to mention a few hundred thousand pounds. Many are called, few are chosen. Only eight teams will reappear in the spring quarter-finals. The others will return to the winter grind of trying to qualify for next season's Champions League. There'll be some hard luck stories to tell around Europe tonight. Some of the unlucky ones, maybe like Arsenal, will put this year's efforts down to experience. But Bayern Munich and Manchester United expect to be in the last eight. Both were last season, maybe both will survive tonight, but what they clearly share is an historic tradition in Europe's Premier Club competition. They both want to get their hands on the European Cup again. Bayern have been waiting for more than 20 years. United over 30 years. I suppose few of those players will remember the sight of the giant trophy being hoisted by Franz Beckenbauer or by Bobby Charlton, but they are both here this evening, senior statesmen at their famous clubs and also constant reminders of the standards required at these famous clubs. Let's meet those players. Alex Ferguson feels his first choice Manchester United team. No disputing that, every senior professional bar David May is available to him, an unprecedented luxury. Just one change from the lineup that thrilled 12 million of you in Barcelona a fortnight ago. Ryan Giggs is fit to resume in place of Jesper Blomkvist. Ron? Yes, and I think Ryan Giggs and David Beckham are very much the key players. I'd like to see them play a little bit narrower than they have been playing in recent games. They try and enable Keane and Skull to dominate midfield in the early stages. Bayern Munich are also close to maximum strength. Mehmet Scholl is injured. Mario Basler upset his coach with his attitude in training here last night. But all their other stars are there. 11 full internationals, 10 current internationals. Stefan Eckenberg is the only exception, and only because he's refusing to play for Germany these days. Yeah, and since these two teams last met, you know, the number nine Alba has established himself in the Brazilian sky, has scored goals in place of Ronaldo, and I think he will be an exceptional player on the break. United will have to really focus on him when they're attacking themselves. Referee tonight is a Dutchman, he's Dick Yol. There are three players in the Manchester United starting lineup on one yellow card Dennis Irwin, Roy Keane, and Paul Scholes. It's been a lovely day in Manchester. Ryan Giggs, who didn't play in Munich over a month out of the side with a broken bone in his left foot, has figured in the last three Manchester United games. Back in harness tonight. pitch here was relayed just 12 days ago it's played just one match on it so far and it's not as good as it was at the start of the season that's for sure big night for Peter Schmeichel his late error in Munich he has been reminded of over and over again in the last few days and a big night for everybody fortunate enough to get a ticket to be here It's England against Germany, the Ashes series of European football. It's former champion against former champion. Two of the continent's executive clubs, both with their tradition and expectation of success. And it's man against man, a test of the players' nerve and fibre 
as much as their talent. What a test of this young man's nerve tonight. Wes Brown playing only his ninth match in the Manchester United starting lineup. Andy Cole trying to team up with Dwight York straight away. Marcus Babel coming between them. Clearance by Thomas Struis, cut out by Gary Neville. Cole is underneath it. Babel climbs higher. Yellen is down to Effenberg. Forward by Mateus. Over the head of Dennis Irwin. Please don't concede an early goal. That was the heartfelt plea of Alex Ferguson to his players tonight. They were down on the canvas in round one of their heavyweight encounters with Dortmund here last year, with Juventus and Monaco last season. They've taken early knockdowns in Munich and Barcelona again this season. They don't want to be fighting their way out of a quarter tonight. They can't afford to be. Yes, just looking at the number 10, Lothar Mateus, one of the world's greats. We fully expected him to play maybe behind the two markers at the back. At the moment, he's occupying a front screening position in midfield. And it's vitally important that United don't give him time and space to operate on the ball. Certainly in Bayern Munich's last match against Bromby two weeks ago, they were pretty ineffective in the first half with Mateus playing as a sweeper, but he moved up into midfield for the second half and had an immediate impact on the game creating both of the Bayern goals that night. Remember, they've beaten Barcelona twice and Bromby since we last saw them in the Olympic Stadium against Manchester United. Yeah, he's going to get in that funny little position, Matthias, which is he's got to play behind uh, Jeremas and uh, Effenberg, and it's going to be very awkward unless one of the wide midfield players, as I say, Possibly Beckham pulls in narrow and helps both uh, Scholes and uh, Keane. Alex Ferguson could just be forgiven if he uh, turns around for a quiet chat with Brian Kidd at some stage this evening. They'll get locked up for that. Tonto has gone and it's the Lone Ranger on duty for now. But this is his club and the European Cup is his crusade and he really doesn't need anyone to hold his hand anymore. Brown feeding York allowed to turn by Kufour and turn into Mateos Salim Izic under pressure on the edge of his own penalty area Brown has caught Effenberg and conceded a free kick Jimmy Ryan is the man alongside Alex Ferguson this evening, who actually played for Manchester United in the successful European Cup campaign of 1968. He was in the quarter-final side against Gornik Zabs, alongside the likes of George Best and Bobby Charlton. Retaining that European Cup link, which Brian Kidd gave Manchester United. Ryan Giggs, Dwight York, Roy Key, David Beckham. Through the legs of Salih Midzic, now taking Effenberg on. Found Keane. Beckham has gone on to his right. Keane instead looks for York, dealt with by Babel, who's had a commanding start for Bayern Munich. Nice and slick, though. That was encouraging for United. Some great first time passing, just didn't produce a final ball. Yet a miss to Sturrums. Elbear has pulled out of the right hand side. Crossed in towards the tall figure of Zickler, who was unmarked, but quite guide his header as he wanted, Lisa Rizou has seized upon the ball, now Effenberg, Sally Midzic, taking on Brown, and the ball is knocked against the young Bosnian international for a Manchester United goal kick by Wes Brown. Atmosphere inside Old Trafford tonight. Beyond Mateus, intercepted by Key. Miscontrolled by David Beckham. 
You know, that's one of the fascinating uh, things about a game like this. You know, you get, I've mentioned about Beckham maybe pulling a bit narrower, enabling perhaps Skulls to push on to Mateus. But in effect, doing that, you know, Clive, it leaves a lot of space for somebody down the left hand side. Lizarazu, as we know, is a great attacking fullback. At the moment, Lizarazu is just going to sit in, but as the game develops, he'll charge forward, particularly if uh, Bayern are looking to catch the game up. down to Beckham, it's a swift ball played inside for Scholes, now Cole on the edge of the penalty area, he's fed Dwight York here, his first touch for once let him down. Chance of a counter led by Zickler, he's very, very pacey as yet Stam is finding out, but Stam is no slouch either. Good contest there, well won by Yat Stam. Beckham. Dix has broken down the centre, got inside Strunz. Chance here for Andy Cole. Great block, right York. Cole had the better chance. Great defending by the two Bayern Munich defenders in front of him. York felt that he had to hit it first time. This was a magnificent ball from Beckham. He drills that right across. Giggs gets inside the last defender. He sets it Cole up. Good blocking. Unlucky with the second shot. You have to say at this level, that's a good chance. But, as you say, full marks to the German defenders blocking. But he looked a bit tentative there, Andy Cole, as he went onto it. It was Babel and Strunz who managed to erect that grey wall in front of Andy Cole as it came to him on his unfavoured left foot. And his finish was a bit straightforward, really. Yeah, he did look positive when he received it. But i tell you the encouraging thing about that, whether, whether Matthias is going to play in front of the uh, two markers or behind them, the diagonal ball, when it's played to that perfection, eliminates defenders. That was a phenomenal ball from Beckham. Odessa gets to play to Beckham, too. This is Neville, forward towards York. Well, he's been penalised. Otmar Hitzfeld is the man in charge of Bayern Munich, and, of course, was the man who won here with Borussia Dortmund en route to their surprise victory over Juventus in the final of 1997. And Liverpool's Karl Heinz Riedl is actually standing about 10 paces away from me here. Scored the two goals in Munich, which were decisive on the night. It's felt now bidding to become only the second man to coach two different clubs to European Cup success. Mateus in towards Elbe. Dealt with by Stamp. Kept in by Beck, by uh, Giggs, I should say. Held up by Strunz. Oh, and Elbert saw that pass from Keane to Irwin, but the ball did go out play. I think Roy Keane's had a tendency to do that in recent games. When he comes out on his left-hand side to try and turn back onto his right foot, and very often he's playing square balls or playing back into his own central defensive areas. One by Strunz for Elbert. Neville made the challenge, Effenberg. Stam in the way that time, now Skulls. Cole. That's Walker important. Pulled out to the left That's so side. important, you can... All right, they've got an understanding, a little bit of telepathy between the two strikers, but it's important they play some solid stuff as well, not just give the ball away needlessly up front. Salia Midsic spotted a run from the back from Lota Mateos. Well, it's a long way back when you're 37 years of age. Did make one or two errors in the uh, first game at the Olympic Stadium. Well, yeah, I think I think at his stage of the game, I mean, he, get, he presented that goal, didn't he? When Beckham won it back. But I think at his stage, if he's in, if he's any sort of pressurisation, I think he'll go under. But if he's given time and space, there won't be a better player in the world at uh, exploiting it. Mateus back towards his own goal, and here's Andy Cole trying to sneak away from Kufour, who only just got there. That's a loose one from Mateus. That'll have raised a few alarm bells as well in the Munich defence. I mean, they, we know Kufour is quick, and the way Cole got past him, it just it'll frighten them a little bit. Babel emerging with the ball. Now Sally Midsic to his left, Elbert just in front of him. Zickler is in the attack too, and Effenberg now. Sally Midsic is on the ball. 
still in a yard here on West Brown. Corner kick. Certainly I've seen enough to suggest that uh, as the season's progressed, Bill, this Munich side, and that's what we're worried about when uh, United should really have killed them off out there, this Munich side has far more purpose about it than it had in the home mate. Four has come forward for the back, has indeed as Marcus Babel. Corner which Stefan Effenberg will take. Dealt with by Dwight York in front of the near post. Vizrazu. Circumnavigated gigs. Sally Mitic is onside here. Three waiting in the centre. Dealt with by Wes Brown. Now Yeremis. This is Mateus. And it probably went closer to the corner flag than it did to the goal. No emotion on the face of Loda Mateus, who always gives you the impression that he's gracing us with his presence and that everybody around him is maybe not quite fit to be sharing the same field with him. You look at his record, he has a point. Zickler on stamp. Manchester United trying to come forward in a measured and purposeful way. Owen looking for gigs, tied up by Kufo. Offside against. I know, Ron, you're a great believer that they're at the best when they're playing at a tempo and they have some momentum, but they've got to be careful tonight. Yeah, I think at the moment, I think they've been outnumbered in midfield. I think, I think the way United have played over the last few weeks, it's ever so difficult for Keane and Scholes, particularly when Scholes, Scholes normally likes to run forward, and he's having to sit in. I mean, that's a lovely little ball down the side for Coles. Coles, of course, was deflected, which made it awkward for Oliver Kahn. It came off the boot of uh, Sammy Kupo. Almost a, carb well. almost a carbon copy of the goal against Villa, wasn't it? The ball fired across and a parry out. Yeremis. Zickler. Yeremis this time to Marcus Bubble. It's a pretty meaty strike by a man who Manchester United tried to sign two years ago after Euro 96 actually agreed a, a five million pound transfer fee but couldn't agree Marcus Babel's wages which I think we're in the same kind of region those demands were cold to early Preservation, but just punched it away. It really could have gone anywhere. Yeah, but that's encouraging from Beckham. Picks it up, sees the space ahead of him, and pumps one in and tests the keeper. I mean, the keeper must have wondered where that one was going to finish up. As you say, an orthodox goalkeeping, to say the least. That. This is Zickler. Beckham managed just to tow that away from Zickler as he tried to break forward. But more than a toe behind the shot, though, it's troubled Khan. Coming up to the quarter arm mark, Andy Cole has had one clear chance for Manchester United. Stamp. Up towards Cole. Too long for him. Double by Kufu. This is Giggs. He's beaten Stumps. Crossed in towards York! 
but Babel did enough in front of him to make it difficult for Dwight York to direct his header. But that's the sort of thing we're looking from from Giggs, and he picks it up, gets at the back of Struns, produces a ball. This is the shot from Beckham coming in. It's it'll be dipping and swerving that, that's for sure. Keeper could have headed it away, really. Might have, might have made a mess of his face, but there's the one now. Good deep cross. And York just can't get over it. I thought at one stage he was just going to guide that into the roof. It's been a, an absorbing opening quarter of an hour. We've been used to explosive football from Manchester United in this Champions League campaign. At the moment, you know, they're having less ball possession than they've probably had in any game. I mean, that's because uh, the German side, Munich, that's because they're very, very good at movement, very good at spreading the ball about, and look at that, that's excellent play to get this fella in. Lisa in towards Elbert! Well, he stole a march on Gary Neville, couldn't quite direct his header. Neville did recover and make it difficult for Elbert, who needed to be courageous, Should've but scored. who had a side of goal. Should have scored. Great ball in there from Lizarazu. He's got across Neville, and a player, he's got a good contact on the ball. When he's headed that, he will have thought he scored. That's a ladder for United, that. That's a lovely ball play between people. Lizarazu picks his ball to the near post. Good movement, bad finish. I have seen uh, tape recordings of all Bayern Munich's games in this Champions League group. There's a lot of debate about uh, Andy Cole's goals for chances ratio. I tell you what, Elbert misses a lot of chances too, but he is Bayern Munich's leading goal scorer. The best striker I've ever worked with in my life always said you have to miss chances to score. So I think that's always been the case. The enemies kicked in towards Zickler. He just managed to sneak away from Irwin then, and if his control had been better, he would have had a clear chance. I mean, that's good movement, he's coming from a wide position. As you say, his first touch wasn't great, just a little bit concerned. You would expect it, Gary Neville, really, the second centre-back, should be hanging onto that position. Clash of heads there between Zickler and Irwin, referee quick to stop playing. Who was the best striker you ever worked with, incidentally? It's a lad named Tony Brown, the bomber. Well, I'm, a, I'm a bit younger than you. 350 appearances, 350 goals or something from seven. I tell you what, that takes some doing. That hurt. And he was a Man U fan. I think that hurt Dennis Irwin a bit more than it did Alexander Zickler. I think you'd be a bit concerned, Alex. His team hasn't really been able to dominate the early proceedings, have they? They've had good moments and they've played well in possession but they haven't had as much possession as they would have liked. May I just take this opportunity to say how strange it is for all of us on the big match to be here at such a big match without Bob Wilson. Bob, you know that you and your family are in our thoughts at the moment and in those of many, many viewers tonight too. Zickler has the... Uh, cut on the top of the head, Dennis Irwin took the impact on the front of his head. Dennis Irwin, by way of a little statistical landmark tonight, is making his 41st European appearance for Manchester United, and now only Bobby Charlton and Billy Fabs have played more European games for the club, which, apart from anything else, gives you some idea of how successful this current Manchester United team have been in, in European football. They've played a lot of it in the last few years, but who knows? This may be the last we see of Dennis Irwin this evening. Alex Ferguson has seven substitutes available to him this evening. He may use three of them. Philip Neville would be the most obvious replacement for Irwin if he is unable to return because of that facial injury. is still off the field too. It's 10 against 10 for the moment. Keen to Cole. Beckham. It's a little long for Cole. Barbell got it away. Keen down to Scholes. And ball by Barbell. 
jumped up in front of it. Quickly taken. It's Giggs. Mateus coming across to cover. Giggs just over around the ball. Yeah, I like to see free kicks taken quickly and brightly. I just wonder at this stage of the game whether that was in a range where maybe they should have just said, hey, let's see if Beckham can frighten them. We've read where they're frightened and a bit worried about David Beckham's free kicks. I just wonder whether that's an opportunity that they maybe should have taken there. Looks like Dennis Irwin is going to soldier on. Alexander Zico has already returned. Owen is ready to resume. I always thought there's only one Father Christmas, you know. Strunz is getting plenty of help against Giggs from either Effenberg or from Mateus. Giggs just helped that into Cole. Back towards York. Who forward was quickly upon him. Sally Midsic caught in possession by Brown. This is Beckham. Foul by Lisa Azu. Now this is very much in Beckham, or maybe better, Giggs territory because it's Right of the goal as Manchester United look at it. And it was Sammy Midzic who put Bayern Munich in trouble. It's Lisa Ozu who conceded the free kick. Stam is forward from the back. It's also the type of area, you know, if, if they are going to dip it, and I think, I'm pretty sure they're going to have a shot here. But the people in the box are ready for the parries. We've seen what Khan can do when, when we blast the ball, he tends to parry. I think it's important to have players following in here. David Beckham has scored free kick goals against both Barcelona and Bromby already in the competition. Into the Bayern Munich wall that time. Cole trying to let that run for your... out as far as the enemies. Now Struts. Looking for Zickler in behind Irwin, who looks to be restored to full health. Can't believe that he's escaped that challenge without a, a fracture to his nose, but apparently Manchester United are happy that he hasn't broken his nose. No stitches necessary for Alexander Zickler on the back of his head. Into the second quarter of the match, which is simmering at the moment. There's an offside flag here against Beckham. Just think at the moment, United had helped the cause a little bit more if uh, Andy Cole and Dwight York were a little bit sharper with the touch. They tried one or two little things, like you said, when Andy Cole just tried to dummy a ball. I think they've got to be a little bit more solid with the ball, make sure they retain it a bit. They'll give the midfield players and the wingers or the wide midfield players a chance to push up to join them. Here is Colt. Now Keane. Looking for Owen to make a move to his left. Instead comes right to Dwight York. Now Skulls. Keane rolled into Giggs. That's a clever touch. It's Cole on the turn. Oh, it was a whisker away. That's the closest that Manchester United have come so far. Andy Cole almost provided the breakthrough. What about that? What a touch there from Giggs. And when Cole swung that round, I thought the element of surprise might have done the keeper. Because you think for all the world, he's going to go and try and curl it around the keeper's left arm. Drags it across him, keeper's wrong footed, narrowly wide of the post, but a magnificent piece of play from Giggs. 
Albert. Four towards Sami Midzic. Bayern lost the lead in the German Championship race for the first time this season at the weekend. But only on uh, goal difference. Not only did they have a game in hand on Leverkusen, the new leaders, they have a game to come against Leverkusen in Munich on Sunday. Already League Cup winners in Germany, already FA Cup semi-finalists in Germany. Bayern Munich remain the team to beat in Germany. So many comparisons between these two clubs. Yeah, we look at the, you know, we talk about squads, we talk about United having a big squad and people like that. I'm just looking through the, the list of players and the Bayern bench, players that aren't playing, you see some very big German names. Cole. In towards Giggs, just couldn't quite grow enough, he was taken a little bit by surprise. Struls doesn't know that York's there, <laughs> behind you. Ryan Giggs, deep towards Cole. Babel did just enough, Beckham is there, Scholes has found a way to the box, Effenberg did just enough. Cole trying to resurrect the move. Lisa Razou emerges with the ball for Bayern Munich. Elbert. Beckham caught him up and tripped him. Both uh, Marcus Babel and Sami Kufour are coming forward from the back for Bayern Munich here. Effenberg takes it towards Sickler and it came off Roy Keane and went for a corner. That was about as much as Keane could do, facing into a gaping goal. I'll tell you what, Zickler, well, Zickler's actually headed there onto Keane, hasn't he? I'm sure Zickler was connected with that, you know. He looked favourite to score oh, for a I moment, he didn't must he? Score. I'm trying to wonder why he didn't score, and I, think he, I actually think he's headed there onto Keane. Effenberg will now take a corner for the right-hand side. going on in there he's pulled back towards the enemies but Skulls is upon him very quickly he did well to get any kind of shot away Manchester United have a goal kick Jens Jeremis who is described by Franz Beckenbauer as Germany's discovery of the last World Cup finals there wasn't too much for the Germans to cheer for once he had uh, already agreed a move from the other Munich team 1860 during the summer prior to the World Cup finals. He's a very versatile and energetic player. Struts. Back to Bubble. Back to Kahn, who is now established as Germany's number one choice in goal. Here is Yelimus. Saw Strums in space and picked him out nicely. Three others forward and the linesman on the near side signalling handball against Strums. This is Beckham. Waiting for Brown to arrive at his shoulder. Taking on Lisa Azu. He's probably the best left back in the world. But Wes Brown has no fear of anybody or anything. I'm not sure he got the ball there. He's been penalised. Hell of a test for him, isn't it, uh, Wes Brown? He won't be 20 till next March. A handful of league games under his belt, but he is a big, big talent. He'll be tested again here. It's Salia Midzic trying to roll it into Zikla. Gary Neville got there first. Out as far as Lisa Azu. Salia Midzic. Now Stefan Effenberg. Space for Lota Mateos. Jens Jeremis, Mateus, straight to Irwin, straight to Giggs, on to York. Asked a lot of Giggs there, although Mateus is giving away a few years to Ryan Giggs, just about got there. Yeah, those are the sort of runs that will take it out of uh, the Bayern veteran, runs where he's really got to stretch his lungs. He's, he's quite happy to just stroll around, popping the ball off. Sally Midzic this time. It's 
It's rather tense air about Old Trafford at the moment. I mean, I think Munich are virtually unrecognisable from the side they played out on the, on the home ground. They, Le they, they had little or no positive play going for them, but now they're all at it. Lisa Ozu finding Effenberg. Tried the shot, and Schmeichel seemed to see a little bit late, but it was bouncing across his body, and he seemed to know where it was going. Effenberg thinks it should be a corner. It's pretty convincing. But it's a good darting run from Lizarazu. Plays it wide, Effenberg tries the curl. Goal kick given. Free kick given against Babel. Foul on York. Takes Keane making a late run into the penalty area. Dealt with by Strings, but only as far as Roy Keane. Strings managed to get to it. There's a half hearted handball appeal by Roy Keane. Strings blocked it. Brown turning it back into the danger area where York is offside. Yeah, it did look suspiciously like as if Roy Keane had sort of handled it, didn't it? I mean, he, he's, he's run forward, he's, he realises he's not going to get the header, reads the script. Fortunately, it's not a major talking point in the game. Just getting back to the United strikers, you know, I said earlier about they, they've got to sort of uh, try and retain the ball a little bit more. They've also got to start making more channel runs. They're making it life a little bit easier. They're playing right in front of the, uh, the two German markers, Babylon and Kufour, and you think sometimes they've got it, and they're good at it normally, they've got to make a few runs and try and stretch the German defence. Here's a Dwight York's former team. The current Premiership leaders, Aston Villa, are trailing by a goal to nil at Stamford Bridge in a Premiership match this evening. Gianfranco Zola has scored that goal for Chelsea, who started the evening in sixth place, but could end it in third. Skulls. To Beckham. Into Cole, trying to turn away from Kufour, who's managed to wipe the challenge at least. Hung up towards Ryan Giggs. United certainly had the better opportunities so far. This is unlucky. Does very, very well a handy goal. Sees the challenge off and from nowhere digs it up. It's a great pity, really. Giggs hadn't held his wide position and came in on the run. Can't get any pace on the header. Lothar Mateus has come to the near side and uh, is requiring some treatment to a hip injury. He is off the field for the moment and in some pain, too. He has been uh, struggling with a uh, a thigh problem for the last couple of months, Mateus. Keen to Giggs. He actually was fined by the club when he was out of action because he was spotted skiing in Switzerland when he should have been resting his thigh injury. He's a bit of a lawn to himself, but the same can be said of one or two of these Bayern players. They have some big personalities, shall we say, amongst their ranks. Beckham towards Giggs, dealt with by Strunz, Manchester United have a corner, pumping up the volume inside Old Trafford. That is very, very important as well. The crowd can play, we always talk about crowds playing a big part. The one thing that uh, Bayern Munich mustn't do tonight from United's point of view is kill the crowd noise. Stam is forward, Brown is forward. Beckham takes, Khan collects. Mateus still in trouble. It's on the uh, subject of his uh, skiing es escapades in uh, Switzerland. He's been in trouble with the Swiss tax authorities recently too, who threatened to take his Swiss skiing chalet off him. If he didn't pay up. He has paid. Just down the road from yours, isn't it, Rob? <laughs> oh, the corner. Mateus is back with us. Stam and Brown are forward again. Manchester United building up some pressure here. Giggs takes. Cleared by Effenberg. Zickler is receiving some treatment now too off the field. Bayern Munich are in the wars. This is Dennis Irwin. Gary Neville. 
High in towards Wes Brown. Not quite control the header for Andy Carroll. I think you saw a little bit of a tactic there, though. Try and load any high balls if you can onto the uh, the smaller Lizarazzi. David Beckham. Ryan Giggs. Tackled cleanly by Mateus. Incidentally, Aston Villa, the Premiership leaders, have now equalised at Stamford Bridge through Lee Hendry. Chelsea won, Aston Villa won. A later score in the Premiership tonight. We will start to keep you in touch with the scores from elsewhere in the Champions League during the second half of uh, this evening's game. It is a pretty complicated equation. But, of course, the point may just be enough for Manchester United this evening. Zickler. Strums into the near post where Sally Midsic has found some space trying to turn it back to Effenberg. It was Beckham who came between them. What a kick to Bayern Munich. That was a brilliant run there from Sally Midsic, though. Darted across the near post, ball played in early, just couldn't deal with it. And as you said, Beckham did just enough to put them off. Manchester United's turn to worry about a corner kick. Effenberg takes, Babel is there, under pressure though from Stan, couldn't direct his header. Irwin clear. Cole, oh, that's beautiful for Scholes. York is making a break to his left. It's Dwight York on the ball. Giggs is inside of him. This is York. This is Giggs, or it would have been, but for Jeremy's fantastic break by Manchester United. Yeah, super break this. Great little layoff. Scholes plays York in. Now you're thinking then, York, you go and open your legs, get the last man, take him back into the box. He's aware of Giggs coming inside him. I'm just wondering whether he should have had a go at the last man there. The worst is going to get some free kick. Beckham's corner. Khan no! holds on again under pressure from Stump. Remember Peter Schmeichel's goalkeeping error in the closing moments in Munich. We sometimes forget the save that Oliver Kahn made after that from Teddy Sheringham. Manchester United still nearly won that match. Terrific stop it was. No goals so far tonight, though. Manchester United have looked marginally the more likely. York to Irwin. Key. Giggs is there. So too, though, is Strutz. Now Yelimis. Effenberg. This is Sally Midzic. Run between Brown and Beckham. Uh, no free kick given. Salamizic is known to make the most of challenges on him. Beckham towards Cole. That's a better run though. He stretched the defenders, he's made them work at him, he's taken the game back about 30 yards. Cole away from Bubble, deflected, and Cole did really well at the near post. That was much better than Randy Cole. Ran towards their goal, desperately looking to throw with the defender. Got the deflection. Oh, no. It's off the pitch, and it's a divot. I wondered who oh, it had hit. It's a bit personal, isn't it? <laughs> I thought it was a German defender. Sonny Message. These are through to Yenemis. Strums is making a run to his right. Giggs has to come back with him. Strunz taking Ryan Giggs back almost to his own dead ball line. Yeah, and you always say to your, your winger if he's as good a player as Giggs, you say, hey, if you don't have to do that, son, you've got to make him defend, you've got to make Strunz defend a bit. But there's so many, I think there's, I think there's so many fascinating sort of contests going on all over the pitch. Five minutes of the first half remaining. Stefan Effenberg with the free kick for Bayern Munich. Post. It's like it was a pace or so away from his near post, but I think it was ever heading in. Yeah, he got plenty to do there, Struntz. 
comfortable, comfortable defending. Uh, I, I should think they're quite happy to have seen them play that free kick short of the near post. Just thinking, I can't remember once in the course of a game, and I know these circumstances and the tactics dictate that, seeing Paul Scholes in the other penalty box yet, apart from a set play. You know, I mean, he's, he's got to play that holding position where we all know he's better when he's, in it, when he's got the licence to sort of get in behind the, the front two. Very often, if you look through United this season, a lot of things emanate from when he does get into that uh, penalty box area. Stump. This is key. Crossed in towards Cole. Couldn't quite direct his header under pressure. It is a goal kick. You know, the only way he's going to be able to do that, actually, though, is if, say, Beckham or Giggs come into field a little bit and enable him to be the spare midfield player from time to time. It is a classic clash of wills tonight, though. Manchester United come to be the leading scorers in the Champions League, come to be the leading scorers in the Premiership. Bayern boast the best defensive record in the Bundesliga. And they've conceded just one goal in their last three matches in Europe. Two of those games against Barcelona, who do like an attack. So far, the defensive element has just held sway. is York. King. Now Irwin. Giggs. It's jammed back behind Dennis Irwin and Aaron has saw enough of it. King to Irwin. Cross towards York, a little long for him. Beckham will give chase. Sally Mizzich is over there, and the free kick is five minutes. That's two or three crosses have gone in from either side when we had no United player sort of making up the ground in the back areas. I think, I think basically the wide midfield players or somebody from those positions should just hold the run a little bit more for the overhead one. Brown's header has found Beckham. Into Giggs with some space here. Ball run across him and it's forced him rather wide. Kicks taking on Strunz. Turn him. Roll back now. It's Roy Keane. It's 1 0. Invaluable strike from the Manchester United captain. They lead with two minutes of the first half remaining. And the quarterfinals start to move onto the horizon. Look at the credit gigs he's got. Perhaps should have taken the Beckham's pass easier. He's got close down. He's kept his head. So he's just thrown it aimlessly. Sees Keane appearing on the edge of the box. Picks him with a spotter's badge. And that is no way that's coming back. That is a great strike from the edge of the box. Keeper unsighted. Still hasn't seen it. Oh, when Roy Keane returned to the Manchester United fold at the start of this season after injury, they said it was like signing a new world-class player. He only played in one European game last season. The season before, he missed the exit here against Otmar Hitzfeld's Borussia Dortmund. And that influence has been missed in all quarters. But he doesn't score as many as he used to do. But few more valuable in the Manchester United cause than that one. You know, and, we're, and rightly so, we're extolling the, the sort of praise and virtues of the United goal. I'll bet when they get in, Lizarazu, who you described as possibly the best fullback in the world, I'll bet he gets his backside kick for, for the, the, the area when he gave away the ball needlessly to Beckham. There has been talk of Roy Keane moving back into the Manchester United defence, but he has said, that is too boring. I want to be where the action is. I'm actually one of those that have said it, but I think it's more to enable Yap Stam to settle down a bit. Here's Ziegler chasing a pass from Strunz, which will bounce through to Peter Schmeichel. Manchester United have just got to do nothing wrong for the next couple of minutes. They will be so happy to go in here with an advantage. And the word Alex Ferguson is used, you know, all through this European campaign. The word he's used most has been concentration. And if we think back to some of the performances, when United, a couple of minutes left of this half, when United have dominated the first halves, the second half have been caught cold. I'll bet that dressing room is don't get caught cold. If they won nothing at half time, make sure we don't let them back into the game straight away. 
That's a magic boost for United there. Here is the goal scorer. Four to Dwight York. Throw into Bayern Munich. It's amazing, isn't it? If Giggs had controlled his first touch from uh, Beckham's pass, he may well have flashed it wide. Skulls on the ball. Irwin to Neville. Now Key. Cole under the ball, beat to it by Kufo. Savia Mizic. Did well to find Lisa Rizzo, the free kick had already been given in his favour. First of two added minutes played at the end of this first half. He'll have noted the time, don't worry. Hitzfeld composing his thoughts. He does tend to rotate his players rather in the fashion of uh, Chelsea the last couple of years. He has such a massive pool available to him and he does have some options on the bench as Ron was saying. Amongst them the huge centre forward Karsten Janker who's broken into the German national picture this season. for Bayern Munich would leave them sweating on other results this evening. Albert crossed in towards Sickler. Half time. So far, so good for Manchester United. A goal by the beating pulse of the Manchester United team. The skipper and leader in every sense, Roy Keane, blasting home from 25 yards to give Manchester United the advantage with just two minutes of the first half remaining. They are in pole position to progress to the last day, 45 minutes away from their third successive quarterfinals. Don't go away. How bad is the nose injury for Irwin? Well, he's actually, he's got a bit of concussion also, he's feeling a bit queasy really, so th there was no way we could risk him. What was your assessment of the first half? I thought it was a very good game. Bayern have played their part in it. And we've, we've had good goal threat. Ryan and the two strikers have created a lot of great openings for themselves. And uh, if we just keep our discipline now and keep putting the ball forward, I think we can do it. The Germans will have to come more at you now, even more at you. Well, it's OK. Yep, good. Yeah. OK, hang on there then. Thank you. Okay. Ronnie Onsen has actually moved straight into Dennis Irwin's position at left back with Gary Neville remaining alongside Yap Stam at the heart of the Manchester United defence. Johnson made his comeback at Tottenham last week in the Worthington Cup after just 25 minutes of football in the previous three months through injury. He was Yap Stam's original partner at the start of the season and now back on the European stage as a makeshift left back for the injured Dennis Irwin. I'm a little bit surprised at that. I thought he might have switched uh, Gary Neville to left back. But I just wonder whether he's been given the responsibility of going out there, playing fairly na narrow, and so sort of going man for man almost against Zickler, who's coming off that side of the pitch. Free kick to Manchester United. And if they can just pick up where they left off at the end of the first half, then. Got template. Beckham with the free kick. Johnson is forward. Almost reached it too. It's nicked away from him by Stefan Effenberg. It will be a corner kick to Manchester United. That was a big header from Effenberg, you know. Johnson was powering in. I thought that's going to be a golden sort of substitution. But he does give them a big advantage here again, Johnson, in uh, set plays and that. They're a little bit short of height. All of a sudden, they're a lot bigger in there. Bayern Munich are a very big team. Beckham's corner. Whipped towards Keane beyond the far post. Oh, what a chance for Johnson, and he couldn't take it. And he got a second opportunity, but nothing like as good as the first one that came his way. Well, if only that had fallen to Colo York. I tell you what, he's been on the field. That's brilliant the way. Uh, there's a suggestion of handball there, actually, against uh, Ruffo. But that's brilliant the way Keane's kept that in play. And Johnson has had an absolutely. Oh, I tell you what, he could have blown that in. And even this is a good chance, you know. 
been on the field a minute and a half, might have had a hat-trick. Never want to exaggerate, Ron. <laughs> well, two then, go They've had to try and get the kick-off in between, yeah, I know what you say. The fact is that Manchester United still lead by that Roy Keane goal just before half-time. Effenberg. And you hope that they've learned from previous matches in Europe where second half they've uh, they've been caught cold in a lot of them. Stamps header only as far as the area. Struns. Here's Babel. A very impressive for Bayern Munich, Marcus Babel. This is Sami Kufour. This is Bayern Munich's first competitive visit to Old Trafford. They had never actually won on English soil until Jürgen Klinsmann and company trounced Nottingham Forest three seasons ago in a UEFA Cup quarter-final. They have gone out of Europe to English clubs more than they've gone through against them. We do have this impression of German invincibility, and let's not forget that England's last success in Europe was at Stuttgart's expense, Chelsea's Captain's Cup triumph in Stockholm in May, although it took an Italian to score the goal. Geremis. A little push there by Stan on Albert. Yeah, that's something Yapstaden does, you know, he sometimes gets too close to attackers and stumbles into the back of them. He's so obsessed with giving them those space, he sometimes takes too much of it. And we talk about Beckham, you know, this fella can whack him as well, Effenberg. He can hit a free kick as well. It's very, very central. And always to the kicker's advantage. It's Effenberg. It's Michael had everything behind it, it bounced awkwardly in front of him. It was pretty routine for Peter Schmeichel. Let's not forget he was voted Europe's outstanding goalkeeper at the start of this season by the coaches of last year's quarter-finalists in the major European competitions. Spurs. Put by Eckenberg. This is Mateus. Now Zickler. Running at Johnson, the Manchester United substitute, taking him on, and Giggs has got back there and done. Well, initially a good work, but Zicker has run it back from him, and Sammy Mitic was in there, and Manchester United had a real scare. David Beckham clearing. Babble up above Cole. This is Jeremis. Now Struts. Well, the chastening experience that for Ryan Giggs, having done a lot of chasing. Gave the ball away very cheaply on the edge of his own penalty area. Effenberg, though, trying to slip it through to Elbert. who just set off in the hope that the ball would come rather like a, a relay runner waiting for the battle. Two four. I think you'll find if we see that situation again, you know, the part young West Brown played in keeping it out. There is again against uh, Sami And I tell you what, he just prevented him getting a full header on that last cross there. He's been penalised. Babel and Kufour are both forward. Effenberg inevitably will provide the delivery. And the way is by Keane, equally inevitably. And here goes Andy Cole, and he does have options right and left here. He has Jeremis all over him. Skulls. Up towards Giggs on the left-hand side, but instead straight to Mateus. Yeah, they made him hurry the ball a little bit there. I thought Andy Cole should have been sharper. When he got onto the ball, I thought he should have knocked it off brighter into Yorkie, and the, mo the momentum of the move would have kept going. But that's the beauty of the game. I mean, you're seeing Munich come forward in numbers, but you know there's always that threat of Cole, of York, either the wide midfield players, and even Scholes getting up in a sort of support position. You know, from a contest point of view, from if you like, from very, the, the different uh, tactics, it's, it's a fascinating game. Here's that one on top of the little left-back, Lizarazu again. Won it this time. <laughs> Brown penalised again. Mateus. Struns. Put away by Jonsson. Spells to Keane.
those forward runners creating space for Brown. That's a brilliant move from York. He pulled short, showed beautifully for uh... York. Now Keane. This is Beckham. Into the near post towards Dwight York. Just a little bit too close to Oliver Kahn. I still think York would read that, you know, and he got a little bit of help from Babel, who just edged him out of the run. Mark Hitzfeld, the um, Bayern Munich coach, has actually said that he believes Dwight York could be better for Manchester United than Eric Cantona was. Sally Vincic in towards Elbert, trying to go through Stamp. Brown emerged with the ball. German Federation wanted him to succeed Birdie votes, but he was already committed to Bayern Munich. Giovanni Trapattoni was the coach of the club last year, but all the personalities and clashes sent him round the autobahn and he packed it in. And Hitzfeld has brought a little bit more discipline to this very colourful club. Free kick which Effenberg or Yelimis will take. Bubble and Kufour afford a game. Effenberg hit the wall, almost came for Bubble. Johnson was first to it. Andy Cole trying to lead a counter attack. Everything's to his right, really. Strums with a terrific challenge, and he's knocked it four to Zickler. And here goes Kufour. Got his shot away, and Michael made a terrific save. Big moment for Peter Schmeichel uh, kept out a very powerful drive by Sammy Kufour. Series of rebounds, a nice little lay to his run. Sammy Kufour pressured by uh, Yapstam. Just a nice push around the corner from Schmeichel. Sort of save that I suppose we've come to take for granted from him during his eight seasons with Manchester United, but it's very important at this moment for him and the club. You won't let it go at the near post, and Gary Neville had to clear. Another scare. It's but Thomas Struntz now. Picked off this time by Paul Scholes. And United have got men to break, but Struntz has won it back from Scholes. And Cole has won it back from Struntz. And here goes Giggs. And Beckham is forward. And Scholes is forward. And Cole is forward. Giggs taking on Matthias. No contest. It's Ryan Giggs. Pulled back towards David Beckham. He's beaten Carl to the ball, but he can't keep it in play. It's a go kick. I think, I just wonder, I think Giggs may have overrun that, you know. But an exciting break, we've seen a load of pressure from Bayern Munich. All of a sudden we get this break, he leaves... Uh, no, he's kept it in, and David Beckham's made a great run across the near post. Just can't hold his touch, just can't keep the thing in play. But that's, that's the beauty of this game. Munich chasing for an equaliser, pushing forward, knowing full well, and we, you know, we're well aware that United got some great sort of counter-attacking players. It's a game within a, a larger game happening around Europe tonight. A win takes Manchester United through automatically, but strangely, as things stand, even in defeat, Bayern Munich would qualify for the quarterfinals. As things stand, and Otmar Hitzfeld, their coach, is being kept in touch with developments around Europe. It's a dangerous game to play. I'm not sure I'd want to know. I think he has to, to be fair, brother. I think he does have to, he has to, so he can monitor the game to a certain extent. I mean, if a result goes right and go back, you know, in other words, if Galatasaray gets something out of it, he's then going to overchase the game if necessary. If, if, if. Yeah. Corner kick to Bayern Munich. Effenberg takes. All headed on by Strunz, and they smuggled it in. It's Sammy Midzic. Bayern Munich a level. 11 minutes of the second half gone. And the Bosnian. Sam Salimidzic, who scored their late winner at the Nou Camp, has scored an equaliser here at Old Trafford. Well, I tell you what, in all things, I always have the feeling about United, they are vulnerable on corners, I don't worry about them, but that's just an ordinary ball in, it's kept in the box, Strunz, I think, his head's the thing in there, and there's two of them, I mean, Elbar could have scored that as well. I mean, you needed somebody to come through and just, just be ruthless and see that off. But I'm afraid sometimes United do have a problem when they're having to defend corners. And a draw definitely takes Bayern Munich through, and it would be Manchester United then who are hanging on results elsewhere in Europe. Those results are going well for them at the moment, it should be said. But 
We have still got well over half an hour of this match remaining. There's only one sure way, isn't it? They've got to go and win it, United. And, and if, if then everything's there's no indecision at all about it. Stefan Effenberg cut out by Ronnie Johnson. We might have put the game absolutely beyond um, Munich just after half time. They haven't, and it's 1 1. It's Roy Keane, Manchester United's goal scorer just before half time on the ball. Challenged by Jens Jeremis. You know, the irony is that Salim is it shouldn't really be playing here tonight because originally Bayern Munich were going to select Mario Basler, but he just showed no appetite for the game during the training session here last night. I was watching him. He is a, a bit of a, a moody type, and Otmar Hitzfeld decided to drop him and play Salim Izic instead. This is Mateus. Now Elbert trying to flick it onto Zickler. Stamp cut it out. Key. Beckham. York. Beckham again. Cole is forward two. Giggs is to his left. Giggs with the early cross. Oh, Bubble missed it. Lizarazu didn't. And as far as Ronnie Johnson, though, it's Beckham again. Effenberg in the way for Bayern Munich. Here goes Elbert. Zickler has made a run ahead of him. He's got Sally Mitic to his left. Elbert going alone. Now he's found Alexander Zickler. Got his shot away. Deflected off Stam. And Elbert's there. And that's not very far away either. I'll tell you what we're talking here. The way the game has swung around. A minute ago we were talking about whether Munich would qualify. Now that almost put United out of the tournament, hasn't it? I mean, it's got the deflection there of Stam. And it's an Elbert is a hair's breadth from turning the game right round on its head. It's 1-1. Keane for Manchester United, two minutes before half-time. Sally and Midzic for Bayern Munich, 11 minutes after half-time, and the wind is in their sails at the moment. And I think United have got to somehow or other sort of get cool again. They've been excited in this little spell, they've got caught up in the general frenzy. They're trying to race from one end of the field to the other in the course of it, maybe giving the ball away a little bit. Maybe they could do it retaining the ball a bit. The uh, substitute is being ready there is Thomas Linker, who is a defender. And that may signal Hitzfeld's intentions, or I think it's Moda Mateus here on the ball who is the player likely to be substituted. Sally Midzic, the goal scorer. Taking on Brown. Held off West Brown, played it back to Lisa Azu. Too long for Zickler. Geeks away. Cole won it, then Babel, skulls for Key. It is just worth reminding ourselves at this stage that a draw for Manchester United here this evening will be fine unless both Galatasaray and Rosenberg win their matches tonight. Galatasaray losing 1-0 in Bilbao, Rosenberg are losing 2-0 in Turin against Juventus. Cole, this is Beckham. Long towards Ronnie Johnson beyond the far post. Dix is there, Khan makes a punch. Might come here for Paul Scholes now for Manchester United. Deflected out of harm's way and for a corner kick. I tell you, I remember us talking about first half. First time he's appeared in the box. That was a stick on goal. He's got a deflection. Half an hour remaining. But Ronnie Johnson's done very well there. Keeper's done exceptionally well there. Can't he just intercept that. Here's Matthias now. Here's your man. Lothar Matthias this evening is over. His replacement is uh, Thomas Linker, who did play against uh, Manchester United in September and has played for the German national team this season. Corner's been taken. Geeks with the header forward. York with the hook volley and Khan held it. Well, it was a fascinating rather than furious first half, but this is really warming up This now. might be a blow. I've been watching Dwight for a minute or two. Dwight York is running to the near touch line to receive some treatment. What lies in store for Manchester United and Bayern Munich in the next half hour? Yeah, just say I've been watching York. He looks to be running a little bit hampered. He's just come over to the bench to see whether uh, 
has some information to the physio. Free kick given against Johnson. It's an ankle problem that York has, he is going to play on for now. Free kick which Effenberg will take. Tossed in towards Zickler. He's got a little bit too much on the header, which squirted over the crossbar. Schmeichel doing a little bit of uh, encouraging work as Nicky Butt prepares himself to come on. That was another fair chance, by the way, for Zickler. I mean, he is a big lad and he does thrust his way in there. Key. This is Neville. Johnson has made a forward run. Here is Ronnie Johnson. Into Andy Cole. Trying to turn bubble. Across the face of Cole and Beckham just didn't expect it, didn't gamble on it, couldn't quite reach it. Good work from Cole though. Quick feet in the box. It looks very much York is coming up, so I mean it looks as if I wonder if Paul Scholes is going to play up front. Or just behind the front. Well, Nicky Buddy is going to replace Dwight York, that's for sure. His options are, of course, Giggs to go up there. But the shape of the side would look better if, if uh, Skulls played just behind the uh, strikers. Skulls is certainly going to play just in front of uh, Keenan Buck, but I don't think Manchester United are going to get too adventurous in the remaining minutes. They are aware that scores elsewhere are going their way. Draw will do at the moment. Wind takes away any worries from elsewhere. Cole got a flick on. Giggs trying to feed off him. Barbel got it away. This is Wes Brown. David Beckett, Roy Key. A little bit of space here for Paul Scholes now. Tried to slide the ball in, Andy Cole just offside. <laughs> well, he was maybe just beyond the last defender, but his partnership with Dwight York, which was re established at the start of October and has produced 16 goals in the last 12 games, has been broken up here by an injury to York. Strunz. Effenberg. Sally Misic. Well, Strunz has gone into that central midfield play now. Looks, he looks, to me, looks happier in there. Wasted ball by Effenberg. That is Mario Basler, the uh, player who's actually already involved in a row with the German national team coach Eric Ribeck over an alleged late poker game before the last international against Holland, who upset his club manager last night. Great run by Scholes. Could go all the way. How many has he gone past? Paul Scholes! Well, he did have kicks in space, and I think he knows that. But having slalomed his way past about five defenders, he just couldn't resist. This is what I, I, I nicknamed him a street player now, and this is what it is. He beats man after man. He's the dribbler in the street, and he looked at him man after man. I'm not sure he could have threaded that one into gigs. I think the defender, Basler or Lynch, was he coming across, probably just closed uh, his view of, of gigs. But he's a little bubble once he starts going. Here is Link, who's now operating in Strunz's open position on the right hand side. Zickler let it run. Sally and Mensic. Elbows onside here. Stan recovered well. Throw in. It's a rather fraught situation here at Old Trafford. Lisa Rizzo, whose long throw set up a late equaliser in Munich. Couldn't get the length that time, although it came off Beckham and. Uh, Stan was rather distracted by Wes Brown's movement in front of him, has conceded a corner kick. Stefan Effenberg is going to swing the ball into that Manchester United penalty area again, where both Babel and 
Kufour have taken that position. Well, Schmeichel's lost it and found it. He's testing. He's very annoyed that Linka wouldn't allow him to throw the ball out quickly. I think he's done him a favour there. Looks as if he's going to throw it into a danger area. <laughs> Schmeichel went. Beckham with a flick on. Good control from Andy Cole. St stepped away from Jeremis, not from Babel. It skulls though. Now Beckham. Possibilities here. Terrific cross. Andy Cole with a header. Oh! Well, it's going to have a paint mark on it when it comes to rest. It was so close to the far post. People will say that's a miss, but that's that's a super ball in. And as soon as Beckham shapes, you know where he's going and where the ball's going. Great run across the defender, a little nick, and he's probably thought when he's nodded it, that's a goal. Oh, he's desperately unlucky, Andy Cole. Funnily enough, since York has gone off, whether he's not aware, aware of the fact that he hasn't got a link up with anybody now and he can go his, on his own a bit, he's, he seems quite happy about that. I'm going to have a couple of injury problems. You can see Sally Midzic down and Alexander Zicker is already off the field receiving treatment. Zickler in the wards and Salih Mizic is now down inside the centre circle. You know, Bayern's three successive European Cup wins in the mid-70s represented the prime of German club football. Only three Bundesliga teams won European trophies during the 80s. Only four continental successes so far in the 90s. They've got nobody left in the Cup Winners' Cup or the uh, UEFA Cups. Even the German national team has been showing some signs of wear and tear and as for the German finance minister <laughs> I think the general feeling is that there isn't a, a great amount of good young players coming through in Germany and that was very very apparent wasn't it in the World Cup I think the score incidentally from uh, Greece Arsenal with a much depleted team are actually leading tonight against Olympiakos, an own goal has put them in front and they can't qualify, but they are in front Panathinaikos the playing, sorry, with Olympiakos both Zika and Sally Mincic are ready to resume who's up for Sally Mincic who has now joined Zickler back on the field. Cole. Corner kick. I think he's had a good game tonight, Andy Cole. And when he's on his own like he is now, he seems to have gone into that roving role a lot more. He's running the, he's running the line a lot more. Beckham short to butt. Crossed in towards Keane. Yeremis trying to help it on its way. Keane will settle for the throw. Skulls. Stam is still forward here. It's in towards Jan Stam, but dealt with by Marcus Babel. Wes Brown. Throw in. But to keep. minutes remaining. Manchester United 1, Bayern Munich 1. It's a scoreline which, as things stand, will take Manchester United and indeed Bayern Munich into the quarter-finals. Remember, if United draw here this evening, they go through unless both Galatasaray and Rosenberg win. And both are losing at the moment. Galatasaray 1-0 in Bilbao, Rosenberg 2-0 in Turin against Juventus. Zickler in towards Elbert and where's Brown just beat him to the punch not even a corner kick as it happens it's gone for a throw oh it's a big header that brilliant defending I mean that's that's a ball in it's leaving them all for dead he shapes up Elbert and Wes Brown just gets the nick on him I think those extra inches are one of the things which are just getting in the nod over Phil Neville in that position at the moment particularly against a big side like Bayern these are a zoo. Little flick on that time by Elber. Effenberg couldn't quite react. West Brown's there again with a header and Manchester United have a free kick. I tell you, it's only a small technical point, but that's two or three times on that, that. Well, it's not a long throw, but it's a medium throw, if you like. 
David Beckham's in a little bit of a false position. He should be near his own goal and make the throw, throw the ball higher, Lizarazu. He's making it quite easy for him to hit for Lizarazu to hit the target man with his throw. Nice United sure there's a handball there. Keen under pressure from Struntz. Yeah, he's enjoying that Struntz. He's going in that midfield area, central midfield, just going and hounding people now. He's uh, back in the national side too, despite the fact that he had a huge fallout with Eric Rebeck, the national coach, six years ago when he was in charge of Bayern. So much so that he was sold by Rebeck because they just couldn't get on. You just get the impression, Clive, that you have to be a success in Germany, you have to have a fallout with somebody. <laughs> He must have been well pleased when Rebeck got the job, but in fact, he's the man who's recalled him to the national team. But they do like a ruck. And they are a good side. This is, this is a far better side. I mean, they look, they look nervous, they didn't look particularly fit or anything in Munich, but this is a good side. Oh, Hitzfeld was used to one or two rounds at Borussia Dortmund, where Andy Muller and Matthias Zama didn't get on either, and he is lent some discipline to this club as evidenced by his decision to drop Mario Basler for this game Basler had rows with Trapattoni last season and stayed in the team from Manchester United deep cross towards Giggs Licker was there and Manchester United had to send him for the corner yeah that's a good link up play all the way through all right may not have been one of um, Beckham's best crosses but at least it's still gone into the danger zone it's enabled to build up pressure Beckham takes oh it's a Keane who was in there again and it came off Yeremis, and it is another corner. It's difficult to tell, just two got the last touch. Yeah. Referee's pretty certain. And we're not arguing. Referee just holding up play to have a chat with Cole and uh, Kufo, having a little bit of fun. Exchanging early Christmas presents. Beckham. And there's a holding there again by Kufour. And another corner. I tell you what, the goalkeeper took it in ever such a strange position there. He stood out in the, almost in the middle of his six-yard box. And I think that's what Andy Cole's trying to do. He's trying to block him off there. That's what Kufour is sort of disputed. I mean, that's a strange position. There is Khan. He stood in the middle of the goal and all of a sudden he goes back onto his line. And the West Ham away strip. Beckham takes. Stam is there! Babel, uh, time just jump better, but though back in towards Yapstam. <laughs> Fifteen minutes remaining. Skulls. Be a certain irony, wouldn't there, if? Juventus by bidding Rosenberg tonight at Manchester United through. Not used to getting too many flavors from Juventus. I think that was a big advantage. Juventus knowing they were at the last chance to lose tonight as well. They could qualify, yeah. And they, and they haven't won a game so far in the competition. In fact, they haven't lost one either. <laughs> in fact, I have to say, I was looking before the match to see what else you get and winning the tournament. Gigs. Would you believe it? The four favourites to win the competition before the ball was kicked tonight with Labrooks, none of them are reigning national champions. Uh, the defending European champions, Real Madrid, and three runners up. Inter Milan, Bayern Munich, and Manchester United. The Champions League. He was originally against admitting runners up into the competition. He changed his tune in the summer. <laughs> Jimmy Ryan looks drained after one night there. Later score in uh, another Champions League game tonight is now Panathinaikos 1, Arsenal 1. Well, 
chance of that later tonight on ITV and indeed a full roundup of all the matches and all the goals and what they mean and who is through. I think over the closing quarter of an hour as well, I think Fergie somehow they've got to get a message under his players. Forget about anything else, anywhere, just focus on this. That's been his key word, focus, and it never is it going to be more important than these closing stages. If minds start wondering about what is happening in Bilbao, what's happening here, there and everywhere, they could cause themselves a problem. Salim is it should cause the problem by scoring. Effenberg with a shot, and Schmeichel did well. That might just have been sneaking in. I think it was certainly heading for his goalpost. Yeah, it's a fine shot. Very comfortable. I actually thought it was going wide, but uh, full marks. Full marks to Schmeichel. He didn't look too, he didn't look to have any problems with it. Took it well. Effenberg's another of these characters whose name appears as much on the front page as the back page in Germany. He's had a drink drive conviction quite recently. Fine by the club and by the courts. But when he gets out of bed the right side, he can play. Fergie's out there now. He's, he's trying to get some, some information to Nicky Butt. I think he wants him playing closer, closer to uh, Roy Keane. I think he wants to get more of a solid base in his midfield. He's got his if you like, his two most aggressive, competitive central midfield players together now. And it's so reassuring to have a manager who's been there, seen it, and done most of it at a moment like this when anxiety is bound to be a feature of the evening. He's certainly told him to keep a lookout for Effenberg. Alex Ferguson's eighth crack at the European Cup with Aberdeen and Manchester United, aiming to add his name to that list of Busby and Steen and Paisley and Clough and all the great managers of European Cup winning teams. Manchester United fans doing their best to urge their team forward, but they're nervous too. But you do get the distinct impression that somewhere now everybody else is thinking about what's happening elsewhere. That's just a feeling of them. Well, we are in the curious situation. Yeah. I'm not suggesting for one moment that this is where we're heading, but both teams are going through at this moment at 1 1. But Bayern, it's guaranteed with Manchester United, they need score lines elsewhere to stay as they are. Strunch forward. Zickler in pursuit, Jonsson in pursuit of him, he's done well again Ronnie Jonsson here and they've only stepped that chance away in the opening couple of moments of the second half Giggs against Linker he's still in third gear Ryan Giggs but he's had an impression to make on the game and he's played his part He's been a giant. Keane, he scored the goal, but his general play has been right up to the maximum. Brown. Here is Keane. Beckham. Into Skulls. That's a clever turn by Paul Skulls. And he is a clever, clever player. Finish wasn't too clever in the end, but he was just off balance. Bright mind. Yeah, but the instinct, the turn. I mean, I mean, it's not the best ball he could have played in Beckham. He takes it off. He half rolls it, and that's what he's like. He's, he's prepared to take a dip. Later score from Athens is now Panathinaikos one, Arsenal two. Nicholas and Elka has put Arsenal in front in that match, rather against the odds and expectation. Here comes the first, I think, of two changes with. Giovanni Elba, the Brazilian, being replaced by the big German striker, Karsten Janka. And we're also going to see the reprieve for Mario Basler, the man dropped from the team for tonight's game. And he is going to replace Alexander Zickler. But we are talking about two German substitutes who are both in the current German national squad. Haven't seen Barca too much at the big tournaments. He picked up injuries during the 94 World Cup and Euro 96. He was injured before the last World Cup and didn't go. He missed the uh, United game in September because of injury. And he 
does have a colourful pass, shall we say. Yeremis. But he is a good crosser of the ball, we might just see that here. Basler. Yeah, particularly with Yanka there, it's very important they don't allow him to put too many, produce too many balls from wide areas. It would also save a few anxious moments if United don't have to concede too many corners at the end as well. Now, the word for the Munich camp today is that Barsden may well be for sale if there's a manager out there who has his locking horns with uh, his personality. Here's Yanka. Here is Basler feeding off the big centre forward. Ronnie Johnson, the defender. Basler shot, blocked by Neville. Cleared by Johnson, straight there to Yanis. Thomas Linka, back to Marcus Babel. Gary Neville, just tall enough. But, key. Stamp. This is Neville. Stamp. Beckham with the header on. This is Andy Cole. Just run away from him. Before did just enough. Oh, Cole has lost it. No, he's managed to recover. Cole had to try and do something with the ball as it went loose and did catch Cole as to see the free kick. Good long ball. It's that tactic again. Beckham gets up above the little fullback, gets it into his run. Yeah, it's a legitimate challenge. Can't know the worst for work. against Sammy Kufour. Alex Ferguson now is uh, almost a constant presence on the touchline there. Phil Neville's just actually told us to down. I, think, I only think he's passing the line of his instructions. <laughs> Gary Neville with a free kick. Headed away by Lincoln. Headed forward by Jonsson. Barbell away, only as far as Key. Beckham. Brown. Keane. It's Brown again. Now it's Beckham again. Brown has gone on. He's on the is there. Humble. Little over five minutes remaining. Manchester United on the edge of a knife here. Giggs takes. Under away is by Bubble. That's by Liz Razu. Just looking here, Fergus passing information on where that free kick was going. Back and foul by Liz Razu. He's passing information on Peter Schmeichel, and I'm sure he was saying we're okay if it stays like this. That's the second yellow card in the competition for Vicente Liz Razu, who, if Bayern Munich qualify, will miss the first leg of the quarter final. Incidentally, if both qualify, they cannot meet in the quarter-final. Manchester United have the free kick. Giggs. Deep towards Cole. Oh, poor header by Kofor, and Cole is there. Was he held back? The referee says no. Goal kick. I do think that Kafour, having lost the ball, had a little grab at Andy Cole there. Well, Kafour's certainly been a little bit anxious with a lot of his challenges in the box. And there's, there's every, every reason to suggest he's had a little tug on him. Oh, that's a foul. Yes. The only thing in his favour, the ball has actually run on the car. Well, Alex Ferguson has passed messages on to Peter Schmeichel in the last minute or so. And Schmeichel has tried to get the message through to the players in front of him that as things stand, Manchester United are OK with a draw. They can't afford to lose the game, though.
He's probably had to explain it to his dad tonight, but just to reiterate, a draw for Manchester United and both Galatasaray and Rosenberg would have to win to put them out and both are losing at this moment. Galatasaray, one down in Bilbao, Rosenberg, two down to Juventus. Draw course enough to take Bayern Munich through automatically. see amongst the supporters and there is among some of the players to be honest I think they're all very much aware now that um, what's going on in the other games Skulls used his arm referee happy for play to continue by Munich in possession Bianca used his arm and caught Gary Neville Look at Neville, he had eyes only for the ball, but he caught him rather painfully. Rather surprisingly and rather amazingly, latest from Athens is Panathinaikos 1, Arsenal 3, Lewis Bormorto. It's a good reserve team they've got at Arsenal. Highlights of that match later tonight on ITV. Alex Ferguson will be hoping to have his feet up in front of the telly with his place in the quarterfinals booked. It's looking good. Salim Izic. Schmeichel, a little straighter than he would have liked. Strunz, Effenberg. Free kick has gone Manchester United's his way. Effenberg just caught skulls. Last minute. Gary Neville. Beckham. Things stay the same, you know. The moments after the final whistle are going to be tenser than the rest of the game put together. If the stairs there, they're going to see both teams do a lap of honour, aren't we, together? Well, Manchester United will need to know for sure that there have been no late goals where they don't want them. What they'd like here is a late goal for them. But trying to provide it, he was fouled by Struntz. I think you can understand. I think you can sympathise with United. Now, there's a lot of free kicks. The game is actually the game is everybody else's mind is focused elsewhere, and I think it's just important now. United don't do anything daft. Three minutes of added time will be played just to keep you on your toes. There, you have got any fingernails left? David Beckham. Okay. Away is by Jeremis for a corner. Barber rather got in his way not of appreciating that I tell you what we wouldn't have thought before a match that if this was all square with three minutes left they'd be dawdling over to take a corner the home side a bit of Anglo-German detente I think here yeah. Beckham Key Brown back I think we've got a feel for the pro Europeans at the moment I think you must also I think the crowd must also sense from that that the players know what's what headed by Barbel on by Struntz this is Butt Effenberg it is an extraordinary situation this We've still got two minutes of added time to play. In all fairness, you can't blame United for this, can you? I mean, they, they, they've been swashbuckling to this point of the tournament, they've been cavalier, and to be fair, the opposition have as well tonight. Munich, Munich until the last stage is when they've got the information that they're safe. 20 goals they've scored in the competition, Manchester United. And it's that fantastic tally of goals that they've scored which could ultimately guide them through one or two are not quite sure what's happening here in front of their eyes but the men 
in control seemed to know. Gary Neville will take the free kick. And this rather eerie conclusion at Old Trafford. Giggs into Cole. Away by Lizarazu. under pressure, happy to get the ball out of play. We've now played two and a half minutes of added time. Referee takes a long, long look at his watch. No doubt really what the outcome's going to be here. It's the outcome elsewhere that's going to decide Manchester United's fate. The fates seem to be working for them. In Spain and in Italy, in the matches which will affect them, the referee running towards the ball. Final whistle goes at Old Trafford. A huge roar goes up from the Bayern Munich supporters. Their players celebrate. And we hear Manchester United have taken their seat at Europe's top table too. They have qualified with a draw. The giant trophy is still within reach for Roy Keane and the team. The news will take some time to filter through. But both of these teams have survived the so-called group of death. And our Champions League quarter-finals again, Manchester United for the third season running. It has been a thrill ride until tonight. Uh, a variety season of gala performances, more scores than a basketball match. Tonight it was more of a chess match in the end, but they've kept their nerve and they've kept their European Cup hopes alive with a draw here this evening. Final score at Old Trafford is Manchester United 1, Bayern Munich 1. It's a result which sends both teams into the quarterfinals. Word has got around at Old Trafford. Manchester United are in the last eight as one of the two best losers. They could actually have lost here and still have gone through. What irony that. And here is the, the table, how things have ended up. Bayern go through at the top and Manchester United as one of the two best losers in the qualifying campaign. OK, let's see what Alex Ferguson thinks about it. He's with Gary Newborn. Alex, you survived the group of death, although in the end you had to rely on other results. Yes, well, I mean, it, it was that way from the beginning anyway. I felt a draw would have been good enough because it was difficult to see how in the Juventus group that, that uh, would work uh, really against us. I was quite confident about that. But nonetheless, there was a nervy moments after half-time. It was from a set-piece, and they're very good in set-pieces. Tremendous efficient team with great crosses of the ball, and it does put you under pressure. But all in all, we're satisfied with the result. With good performance by us in most parts. Although that was unnerving, in fact, your side held its nerve for long periods in this I game. thought we did. Uh, once, once into the middle of the second half, we, we ma managed to compose ourselves a good bit. And, uh, OK, we never maybe looked a threat we were in the first half, but nonetheless, it's a, it's a good result and it gets us to the stage where we want to be. Yes, you're definitely in the quarter-finals, and, and you realise now how much you must have missed Roy Keane last season, because he had a score. Oh, I mean, never said I. I thought they all did well, but they've worked very hard. We're very pleased. And so they should be. United 3 is one of the two best runners-up. And um, the last data, uh, here we come, Terry. A um, bit nail-biting in the second half. Well, like you said, what he didn't need was to lose, lose yeah. that goal. I mean, yeah. he, that was the, the thing that could have put a lot of pressure. And I, thought, and I thought they were in control quite well. I don't think they panicked, and I thought that they did the job quite well. I think the word was getting through there that uh, a draw will, sure. will do us. And, and I think that steadied everyone up a bit, and it started to be a bit of a... A steady again. You can't blame. I mean, a few of the fans were getting irate with, with Manchester, and you can't blame them for going gung ho or not going gung ho at that stage. Of no, the game. of course not. I think um, they kept their nerve in the second half at one-one, and I felt that uh, they learnt a lot from the Barcelona. I mean, don't forget Barcelona's second half here came back from because they perhaps went a little bit to gung ho, and they've learnt from that, and they kept their back four intact, and they kept things nice and calm sure. at the back. But the fans, you know, that's an awareness for the fans really in many ways. To, to get the result. We talked earlier about Peter Schmeich about um, the psychological war that was uh, waged on him. He pulled off one terrific save in the second half. Yeah, he did, actually. There was uh, Kufo against the ball here, and he really slams it high to his right, and it's an absolute brilliant save. 
that would have definitely uh, put the cow amongst the pigeons. That one, right? Just. But it's been a great. It's been a great group. It's been a terrific campaign. Yeah. Hasn't it? It's been a terrific group. I mean, they're not got the flair and the excitement of a Barcelona band unit, but he, the coach, I was impressed with him. He set felt. everything out well. The tactics and shape were right. Weren't he kept it? his shape well, and this, he knew exactly. Result. I said it would be a, a draw. I thought it would be a draw at the start, and uh, they, they they set their stall out very much. So the Germans. Good, absolutely. OK, uh, a result from the Premier Division. Chelsea have beaten the Villa by two goals to nil tonight. Flow, two goals to one, I should say. Flow in the very last minute for Chelsea. This program was sponsored by Ford and PlayStation, UEFA Champions League sponsors.